Before we get this video started, I quickly explain how the pump that we are going to build works. It's actually really simple. This is an inlet where the water comes into the pump. When the impeller turns, the area between two plates, what's actually are called veins, expands. It's creating vacuum pressure and the water will be sucked in. Water will be trapped between two veins when it finally arrives to the outlet. Because of the pump housing shape, the area between two veins now will shrink, creating positive pressure and the water will be forced out through the outlet. I like to say water will be squeezed out. I hope you have now at least some idea how this flexible impeller water pump works. So let's continue with the rest of the video and 3D print one, shall we? And this video is sponsored by PCBWay, more about them later. Everything what we need to build this flexible impeller water pump is in front of you. Let's start with the pump body. This orange one is a test print, to see will my design even works. I did multiple errors but I fixed those and I printed another one with blue filament. This is printed with Isan PLA and for printer I use Creality Sermon D1. Just saying, if you wanna build this water pump by yourself, links for 3D models and everything else that you need you find down below. And print settings that I used you see on the screen. And this video superstar is the flexible impeller. That is printed with, you probably guessed, TPU. I printed this impeller with GDDAC X+. TPU is absolutely perfect material for this application. TPU is flexible but no so flexible as some other flexible things. No, 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 this sentence not working. What I'm trying to say, TPU is flexible material but it's also pretty rigid. And one of the strongest material that you can print with FTM printer. And this is exactly what we need for this impeller. We need a couple of things more for this build. A 10mm shaft, one side is sanded flat and one bearing. And of course we need a lead for the bump. I'm using acrylic lead that I ordered from BCB Way. Just saying you can 3D print the lead but I'm using acrylic one because I'm doing the video. And I almost forget one double sided o-ring. But okay, now we have all, let's start building. First, push this double sided o-ring into the hole from the impeller side. Inside there is this little extruded ring and the double sided o-ring should just snap in place. And it seems to work. Next, just push the bearing into the place. It actually doesn't matter which one you do first, but both of those have to be in place before the next step. Now we need to install the impeller and the shaft. Sounds easy, but not really. It needs a lot of force. Basically, you can do this in two ways. The first way that I'm using is to push the shaft through the paper. Oh fuck. <laughs> push the shaft through the bearing and then install the impeller. The second way is exactly opposite. First, push the shaft into the impeller and then inside the water pump body together. When it's done, it should look like this, and it's pretty impossible to turn by hand. Now the last thing, lead. In the last couple of months I have used PCB Way CNC service a lot and they have done every time absolutely perfect job. But they don't have only CNC service, they have also 3D printing, sheet metal fabrication and even injection molding. Placing the order is unbelievably easy, just upload your 3D model, select the material and if needed leave some special notes or instructions. If you need something that is, for example, CNC machined and you don't have the right machines, it's not really making sense to buy CNC machine for one part. It can be pretty expensive. In this case, PCB Way is your one stop solution. Back to the video. Ok, for right now it seems to work and my hopes are getting higher. By the way I am running this pump right now dry but you shouldn't run this pump dry. I am just having fun. And I completely forget those hose nozzles. But the big question, how I will power this water pump? 
I will use 775DC motor with a gearbox. The gearbox that I'm using is also my design and I have video about this. This is the most downloaded model that I have ever made and I have received a lot of positive feedback about this. So if you are interested I leave the video link and model link down below. But before we are going even further I need to see do this water pump even works. So I run the drill test again in my shower room. Um, good, it's working, so let's continue with the gearbox. I explained the situation with the gearbox really quickly. If you wanna see how it's pulled, a video link is down below as I told before. But this planetary gearbox is stackable. With this gearbox you can get gear ratio from 3 to 1 up to unlimited. Right now this gearbox has 3 stages, which means the gear ratio is 27 to 1. It's too much for this application, so I'm removing one stage and then the gear ratio will be 9 to 1. Which is fine for 775DC motor. 775DC motor runs 12,000 RPMs at 12 volts. So theoretically output RPM should be let's say 1300 RPMs. I told theoretically because of the friction the real RPM is around 1000. But the gearbox and water pump goes together on this wood plate. I 3D printed for both of them mounts with PLA and a coupler with carbon fiber nylon. It's probably overkill but I can so why not. So I screwed the mounts to the wood plate, connected the gearbox and water pump with the coupler and we are ready to do some real testing. So this is my test setup, pretty much like always. The water source where the water goes into the pump is lower than the water pump itself because the flexible impellers water pumps are self priming and this should not be a problem. But it is. <laughs> this water pump is not so powerful enough to self prime itself from somewhere 20 cm. So I just raised the bucket to the same level as the water pump. The inlet tube didn't want to stay in the water so I so I used my future wind turbine part to hold the tube in water. And it's printed also with carbon fiber nylon. <coughs> By the way, not so bad. It's working, but I know I can do better. I redesigned the flexible impeller. The major difference between the new and old impeller are those veins. By the way, if somebody don't understand what I'm doing with the lighter, I'm cleaning the strings. Okay, about the veins. I made them thinner, which means they can flex better. They are a bit shorter and instead of 7 veins, there are now 11. Will this now works better? I don't know yet, but I believe so. It was so close to start by itself, which mean improvement has happened.
Okay, the last impeller works better, but there are two things more that I wanna do before this video is over. First, I will fix the leaking, trying to fix actually. If you have no idea what I will do the gas, it's fine I explain. The biggest leaks happening around the hose nozzles. This idea has been a long time in my brain, so this is uh, more like an experiment. Maybe I say this because this didn't work, but, but uh, my idea was to heat up those hose nozzles. And PLA plastic start melting around the nozzles and around the threads. And basically the hose nozzles will melt in there. It's similar to threaded inserts. It didn't really work, but uh, it was worth of trying, I believe. And second, I will use some silicon between the pump body and lead. Oh, and I almost forget, I'm going to remove one stage more from the gearbox. So instead of having 9 to 1 gear ratio, now I will have 3 to 1. So theoretically in this case, the output RPM should be 4000. And the next test is happening outside, because the weather was really nice today. Ok, this water pump for some reason didn't run so smoothly as before. Why? Actually not a big deal. The impeller was pushed too hard against the lead. I moved the gearbox back a bit and now it seems to be fine. But still this pump isn't working so well as it did before with 3 to 1 gear ratio. The water flow is unstable, the motor getting pretty warm and the sound is like motor and gearbox are dying. So I added one stage back. But improvements with the leaking have happened. The lead is not leaking anymore, but the hose nozzles, there aren't any improvements. Leaking exactly like before. So overall, I think this water pump turned out pretty good. Definitely it's working and this already makes me happy. Because at the beginning I was really worried that this won't work at all. And I waste a nice amount of my time. If you wanna build this water pump or and gearbox by yourself, everything that you need is down below. I enjoyed making this video and I hope you enjoyed watching. If you are not a subscriber yet and you wanna see this type of projects in the future more, I highly recommend to push this subscribe button. But for now, thank you for watching and see you guys next time. Bye.